Hello, my name is Ranger Carl and welcome to Shenandoah National Park. We're currently out exploring the Big Meadows area of Shenandoah and you might notice it's looking a little different than it usually does. I can't quite put my finger on it, but if you've ever visited the park in spring, summer, or fall, or maybe you've seen another one of our videos or some photos online, you might be familiar with the beautiful, colorful gra grasses here throughout the summer months, or maybe even the wildflowers. Now, of course, this time of year, it's looking maybe a little bit more windy and wintry. But actually, if you look real close, you can tell the entire meadow is almost completely underwater. Well, of course, that water is going to be frozen in the form of snow, ice, or frost, but that still means that this is a valuable resource throughout the winter and the rest of the year. Now, I'd like you to take a moment and think. Look out at this snow-covered meadow behind me and maybe write up a list or even draw some photos on who or what might be benefiting and using this valuable resource of water, even when it's frozen. But now, we're going to go into the meadow and take a closer look. Now, of course, as I mentioned before, the meadow is essentially underwater right now with all of that snow. But that water has to eventually go somewhere, and usually that's going to start happening as it melts away getting into the spring. A lot of that water is going to simply run off into our streams, over our waterfalls, and down the mountain. But most of that water is actually going to continue to seep right down into the ground itself. And this is very important because that means it's going to be hanging around in the park a lot longer. Now, that will eventually seep out into maybe some of our freshwater springs, which is going to be refreshing the wildlife for even longer. Some of it right here in Big Meadows is eventually going to slowly seep into the river that flows over Dark Hollow Falls. Now there's over 90 perennial or constant streams here in the park and this snow is going to be feeding into them throughout the year. But even right here beneath our feet, we are going to be directly using that water as well. And that's because as the snow melts, it's going to be seeping into what's called saprolite. Now that's just a fancy word meaning rotten or broken rock. Underneath our feet is about 80 foot thickness of rock that's full of cracks and crevices and holes and pores that's going to be holding on to that water long term. And this is where we pull the water up to use in our buildings like our visitor center, the restaurants, and our campground. So we're going to be directly drinking this snow melt for years to come. Now, even on the surface, as the snow melts away in the springtime, some of it's going to be hanging around even longer, filling in temporary ponds and pools. Now, after this snow melts away, and if it stays up on the surface, it might fill in something that we call a vernal pool. But what exactly is a vernal pool? Well, let's break down that phrase a little bit. The word vernal means spring or occurring in the spring. And a pool is, well, it's something you'll jump into and swim in. Now, that means these vernal pools are really only here for a short time period, mostly throughout the spring and early summer. And that makes them very important for specific types of animals. And that's because while these temporary pools, usually only a few inches deep, more of a puddle than anything, are here for just a short time frame, that means there's some animals that can't live in that water year round. Can you think of an animal that needs to live 100% in water? Of course, that's going to be the fish of the park. But if these puddles, these vernal pools, disappear partway through the summer, there's not going to be any fish living in that water long term. Now that means that there's no big predators in these bodies of water, which makes it perfect breeding and egg-laying grounds for the park's amphibians. Now, 
We're right next to one of our primary vernal pools. This time of year, it doesn't look like too much. And that's because, of course, the snow hasn't yet melted. But when the snow melts and those spring rains start coming, this area is going to fill up with water and that's going to start attracting the frogs, toads, and other amphibians like salamanders and newts as well to breed and lay their eggs for the coming summer. But what exactly are those frogs and other amphibians doing this time of year? Well, there's a few different things they might be doing. Of course, a lot of them are going to be hibernating, but this is going to be a little different than the hibernation you might think about when it comes to rodents or bears that are going to be burrowed away in their dens because frogs and toads can't make their own heat. They're cold-blooded. So that means they have to go through a few specific processes to hibernate. And instead they do something that we call brumation. And that's just the cold-blooded version of hibernation. Now, some of these animals, like the American toad, for example, is going to dig underneath the frost line in the soil, get nice and deep in the ground to try and huddle away and stay warm and protected for the winter. Others might actually sit at the bottom in the water or soft mud of a pond or a stream. Again, staying relatively protected from predators like fish, and they're going to slow down their body, their heart rate, their breathing almost completely stops until it starts to warm up. But some animals take it even a step further. Frogs, like the wood frog, almost completely freezes solid. And this is an incredible adaptation to do because you don't find that a lot in the animal world. If you just imagine being outside, not just for a few hours, but all winter long in the freezing cold and wind, you don't have a jacket, you don't have boots on, you don't have a scarf or hot cocoa, and imagine freezing solid. That gets very dangerous for warm-blooded animals like us or some of the other creatures that you might find in Shenandoah. But these frogs, like the wood frog, have brought on perfected adaptations to be able to do so and come out in spring completely unharmed. And this process actually starts right at the moment that the outside temperature starts to drop below freezing. Once the weather drops down into the high 20s, their heart rate is actually going to speed up a little bit as they're pumping sugars and special proteins all throughout their body, through their blood, and into their muscles. And this increase in sugars, like glucose, is going to kind of work like an antifreeze that we would put in our vehicles. And it's going to actually lower the freezing point of their blood and muscles and even the cells within their body. So that means that as some of the fluids in their body eventually start to freeze up and actually turn into ice and frost inside their body, it's not going to harm the cells. It's not going to cause damage. And these frogs can freeze up to 60% of their body. The innermost section of their internal organs is the only thing left thawed. They would feel hard as a rock. Within 20 hours of starting to freeze, their heart rate drops to zero, their breathing completely stops, and their blood flow is no more. Now, this is really important because compared to those other amphibians like our salamanders or those toads that I mentioned before that are just burrowing away, those wood frogs are going to be the first frogs to emerge from that hibernation or from that brumation after winter because once the weather starts to reach back regularly above freezing they're going to start to thaw out and that's when they emerge from the forest and make their way to those vernal pools that have already filled in with water so that very first earliest uh, winter or sorry spring breeding of our frogs is going to happen as early as march as the snow starts to disappear 
from creatures like our wood frogs and even our spring peepers, another frog variety that can uh, survive freezing temperatures for up to three days at a time, similar to those wood frogs, but not quite as frozen. So if you were to come here in Shenandoah in a few more months, after the winter has started to move on its way and leave that water behind, take a stop in the Big Meadows area. Maybe look for those breeding grounds like those vernal pools that are full of frogs and their eggs. Or even just stand in the middle of the quiet meadow, open your ears and close your eyes, and you might start hearing those chirps and peeps and croaks of those amphibians. Uh, now that the winter has come to an end and the spring breeding season has begun. But there's a lot of other animals out there that are taking full advantage of this winter weather and snow even today. Of course, there's a lot of other animals that are adapted to be out and active in these winter months. And these animals are very good at surviving even when the snow is out kind of similar to those amphibians that we talked about uh, previously. Now, some of these animals, of course, might be in hibernation, tucked away out of the cold and the wind, but the animals that are active, you might notice a few deer just over my shoulder in the background, are going to still be out and taking full advantage of what the winter has to offer. But you might ask yourself, we're standing in the middle of a meadow, there should be quite a bit of grass, right? But looking around, you notice not too much living grass to be seen. So what are these animals eating this time of year? Well, they're actually going to be eating a few different things, especially for those deer. They might be pushing their long noses through the snow, trying to get down to the seeds or the dead grasses that are underneath our feet. They might even be digging for high protein foods like acorns and other nuts and seeds or they might even be walking right up to a tree and trying to nibble away at that bark, get underneath to the nice soft wood or cambium that's going to be full of proteins, fibers, minerals, and sugars, especially that are so important. Now, a wonderful thing about this snow is that it helps to protect a lot of animals, including those deer. You might notice if you take a moment of silence and just listen to the meadow in the winter, There's not much sound to be had, except maybe some of that wind. And that's because this snow is an excellent insulator. So what that means is animals that might be hibernating or even some rodents and ground squirrels that are still active this time of year, they're going to be digging tunnels throughout the snow, hiding away from predators, but also staying warm from that nice snowy insulation. Now that also means you notice it was pretty quiet, it's insulating from sound as well. And really the main thing we do here is going to be wind, and animals even like those deer behind me are going to be sheltering away from the wind, keeping warm, using that very same snow. They'll be digging out dugouts to use as wind blocks and shields. Now, a great thing about this snow for us is it helps us see a lot of the animal activity that's been out before us. Because even without seeing the deer behind me, you see a lot of their tracks left behind as they're going through the meadow, grazing and browsing and looking for food. You notice some raven tracks and other bird tracks that are out here doing the same. So all of these animals and visitors as well are out here taking full advantage of what this snow is able to provide us. So being out in the Big Meadows area in the winter, to some of you, might look like a big windswept wasteland. To others, maybe a winter wonderland. But of course, there's a lot that this winter is giving back to the park. This water in the snow is a valuable resource that is giving back not only to the rivers and waterfalls, to the wildlife and plants, but to us as the visitors and lovers of the park as well. Now, you can see how this snow gives back to nature, even in your own backyard or local park. So I recommend throwing on some snow boots, putting on your winter jacket, maybe grabbing a mug of hot cocoa, and heading, heading out into the wilds around you 
to take a closer look at how the wind sculpts the ice on the top of the snow. Maybe looking for some animal tracks and seeing what's been out hiking before you. Or maybe just taking a moment of silence, looking around throughout the wind and the chill in the air, and seeing how that snow and winter weather is giving back to the nature around you. And of course, once you're done thawing out, feel free to stop on by at Shenandoah to see this wonderland for yourself.